Um, hello, my name is uh, Anthony Arroyo. I record under the name El Nomon. Uh, today we'll be talking a little bit about how to make um, something similar to the uh, Monome program MLR, but do it within Ableton as opposed to using anything from uh, from Max or Max for Live or anything of that nature. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to drag in a clip that you'd like to use. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have to shorten this clip so that it's a more convenient size. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down to four. I get no, not four. I mean, um, let's listen to the clip real quick. Okay, so let's make that two bars, just so that it's a little bit more convenient. to map across the eight buttons of a launch pad in this case. All right. So what you're gonna do is now you're gonna separate this clip into eight parts. And a convenient way to do that is to just select an eighth of it, go to the menu, let's see. And you're looking for um, split clip. I usually use the key command, but for the sake of demonstration, we'll find it up here. There it is, split. You can also just do a command E, which is what I normally do. And this is a really convenient way to split into eight parts like this. And then you're gonna select the entire thing. Right click, cut, or copy either way, cut. Um, go back to the session view, find the track you wanna use, and just paste it in there. And you'll see that it'll come down in order that way. So we're going to go ahead and close this window for the sake of room. Um, and now what you're going to have to do is set these clips so that they play in order. Otherwise you're going to have just one eighth of a clip playing. That's not really what we want here. So you're going to use what are called follow actions. And these follow actions you'll see are in um, are, are right in the in the clip window right here. And the good thing is that manipulating these while they're all selected is that you can just manipulate them once. So what we do is we set the length of the clip, which is one beat in this case. And then we use this drop down menu and find next. All right. And finally, you're going to set the quantize here to 1 16th. And the way the reason you do this instead of up top is because this way, even if the top is set to one bar, the clips will be 1 16th. And as you can see here, they're all playing in order. And it repeats as soon as it gets to the bottom of that group. So now we're getting the entire original beat, but in eighths, essentially. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna MIDI map these across the top uh, row of a launch pad in order to emulate the, the performance of the mono, um, which maps each clip across um, a row of, of buttons. So I messed this up here. Um, you're gonna enter mini map mode and you're going to independently select each clip and then press the button that you wanna map it to. In this case, I'm mapping it across the top row of a launch pad. So as each part of the clip plays, a different button will scroll across the this launch pad here. And by selecting different keys in that top row, I'm able to restart the clip at different points in the in the clip. And this is essentially all that MLR does. Or this is the, the main functionality of MLR that people like a lot. So already we have something very similar to MLR. What we are missing, however, is a way to stop the clip. So usually use the, the track stop button. But I found for a whole bunch of reasons that if you press the track stop, you're going to see the clips hang so that the, it's still ready to play. So what you do is you take one clip and you lower the volume, you delete the follow actions, and you basically now have a dummy clip that has no sound on it. And I'm going to trigger this clip when I want to stop the track. But now it will just stop, and make it very short also, um, it will just stop 
as opposed to leaving it the last clip played sort of armed and ready to go the next time. So now I map this to the scene select button on, on the launch pad. And that way I can just stop the clip at any point. And this is sort of in lieu of the uh, choke groups, which are on the MLR. Uh, so the choke groups on the MLR will allow you to um, stop one clip when you start another clip or something like this. So it allows you to, so if you have two drum breaks so that your drum breaks don't play at the same time. So I like to use just, just track stop uh, buttons instead, just because I think it's a little bit more versatile. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to find a, just a simple ping pong delay. Another thing that, that MLR has is it has an effects dump, which basically allows you to um, send any track to an effect, usually delay, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly. So what I'll do is I'll just set this one return to toggle. And so by setting this return to a button, it just either zero or full volume. And it'll allow you to send any segment of the clip to the delay really quickly. And I set this actually to the bottom row of buttons um, on the launch pad. And this, so this way, for example, for track one, I set the bottom left button on the launch pad to, to dump the whole thing to the delay track, to the delay uh, send, rather. And this will allow you to, uh, to sort of like remix things on the one. What's cool is that if you select all these and drag them into your library, it will save them as a group. So in this case, I could just name it beats and then all the follow actions are taken care of and then I don't have to reprogram them every time. So it makes for loading these up really easy. Once you've set a whole bunch of these, you could just put them in and out. Also, if you notice, look, if you take the clip out, these MIDI assignments are, are with the slot and not with the clip itself, which means that you can um, interchange them without worrying about remapping everything. So usually what I do is I just make about, what I've done with one track here, I just do with about seven tracks. And that way I have seven clips ready to go essentially uh, giving you all the functionality of MLR, but with the benefit of being able to pitch shift, etc., cetera, um, and use a lot of the sort of clip stuff that is cool about, about Ableton. And see if you can even um, map these clip slots separately, independently of the actual clip that's in them. So this will allow you to use, um, you transpose, uh, you can warp these clips differently if you'd like to. Um, so this way you're able to get, you don't have, well, one, you don't have to buy Max for Live. Uh, two, I, I mean, I don't like to use Max for Live all that much um, while I'm performing because I'm not totally convinced of its stability on my system. So this way you don't have to worry about that stuff at all. So. so now you can see I'm playing these two, uh, two different clips. You can restart them at any point. It's really cool. I think even if you're not going to perform with this, you can even use this as a way just to sort of dream up new drum breaks, make new breaks out of old breaks. Yeah.